You know, for years, people have repeatedly told me, there's no wildlife in my area to photograph. Well, I'm here to tell you they're wrong. I don't care if you live in the middle of New York City, there's plenty of wildlife to photograph within a short drive of your home. You just got to get out, slow down, and look for it. Join me today as I go on a scavenger hunt of sorts to try to photograph as many subjects as possible on a lake near my home. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. subject right there. Yeah. Nice osprey sitting on the nest. It looks like she may have chicks too. I know one thing, these early summer mornings, it's cool in the morning, but uh, it warms up quick. So we am get rid of this and get ready to shoot. All right. This is a real good situation. I want to get on the sunny side of this nest and see what we can do. We get up here to the front of the boat and get a better view. Oh yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful situation. Beautiful light too. The sun's been up a little while, but uh, we hadn't reached that 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock harsh light yet. She's sitting on the nest. We're about 40 yards off from the nest. Uh, she's very comfortable. The male is sitting up here on a tree to the right. Um, Hopefully they'll bring some food in. I saw with the binoculars, we've got two chicks on the nest. So, uh, you know, th as soon as those babies hatch out, you know, they got to start feeding them hard and heavy to, to uh, get those little guys big enough that they can fledge out. And it doesn't take them long to fledge. So because we're at about 40 yards, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna need some power. So I'm gonna shoot 500 millimeter lens and I'm gonna start off with a 1.4 converter. Now, back here in the background, it's really pretty. We've got the old dead cypress trees in the background, which add a lot of character and show the environment that these birds nest in. Okay, we're all set up. I'm shooting a 500 millimeter lens and I've got a 1.4 by converter. So the water in the background is blue to the eye, but if you convert that to black and white, it'll be a neutral tone gray. So I've based my exposure on that, and I, at 640 ISO at f8, after a test shot, my histogram showed that I was a little bit hot on the white part of the bird, which is the head and the neck. So my exposure now is going to be 1 2500th of a second at f8, and my ISO is 640. You know the real good shots or when the male brings a fish in, they sit there and they feed the chicks. The chicks, from what we can tell with binoculars, are you know really small so far. Now as they get bigger, they'll stand up higher in the nest. But you know, this is a waiting game. And if we pull up here, you could sit here for hours and still not see anything. See now just that quick we got got a little bit of action. Wow, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And in situations like this, you got to shoot a lot to get a little because, you know, again, we're fighting the rocking of the boat. All right, he's coming into the nest, coming in. Beautiful, beautiful. We've got both birds sitting on the nest now. And don't be afraid to use the camera like it was intended to, to be used. This camera will shoot 10 frames a second and I push it to all 10 frames. If you don't use the motor drive on these cameras to its utmost capacity, you're going to end up missing the shot. Um, trying to shoot one frame at a time or two frames at a time as the bird's flying around, you're not going to get the shot because inevitably, you know, there's going to be a wing covering the head. Uh, you might be slightly out of focus. Uh, you, you never know. There's a multitude of things. So keep that motor drive on the highest that your camera will possibly shoot at, and don't be a, don't be scared to burn it. Um, 
you know, we're in the digital world now, and it's not doesn't take but a few seconds to sit there and delete what you uh, what you don't want on your card. You know, the osprey is one of my favorite birds of prey to photograph. You know, their plumage is so striking. You got blacks, you got tans, you got yellow eye, the the pure white plumage on the head and on the chest and under the, underneath the body. Uh, really amazing birds to watch in flight their nesting behaviors, their breeding behaviors. So, you know, she's not going anywhere. The chicks look good and healthy, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna remember where this nest is and watch the weather, head back out here on the morning that uh, it's nice and slick, and then you can get some, some really beautiful shots and not have to worry about all the rocking of the boat. We've got a huge rookery. Okay, let's ease up here. Looks like cattle egrets and little blues. Very cool. I had no idea this was here. And birds flying all over the place. We might get some good flight shots out of this. I don't know what stage the birds are in as far as nesting. Um, obviously, they are still nesting because there's a bunch of birds. All right, I'm going to set my tripod up a, intentionally a little bit high because I think this is going to be more of a flight shot opportunity. Um, I don't want to get too close to the nest. They do have chicks on the nest right now. It's not so much that you're going to disturb the chick as you run the risk of spooking the adult off the nest. And I've seen this happen before. Where the, when the adult leaves the nest, they'll accidentally knock the chicks out of the nest and into the water. And of course, once they hit the water, you know, you've got a variety of other predators. You've got alligators, you've got snakes, and you have uh, snapping turtles that will take advantage of any opportunity for food they can get. So let's see here. I think this is going to be about the right height. Oh yeah, this is going to be nice. Look right over here. I don't know if you can get a shot of this. We got three juvenile little green herons sitting on two limbs right next to each other. Oh my gosh, isn't that cute? They are obviously real comfortable with us being here because all three of them are sitting there just preening. This is really nice. I want to make sure I get all three of them in sharp focus, so I'm bumping that f-stop up to f8. So I got a little more depth of field because we got one bird sitting on one limb and then just behind them, maybe six to eight inches um, behind them, the other two are sitting there. So there's a little bit of distance between them. And I want to make sure I get all three of them in sharp focus. Coming in. They're everywhere, they're everywhere. Bank this way, bank this way. All three of those juvenile green herons are sitting right here. They flew from that limb over there to right here. Look at them. Actually, what we got going on here, I thought it was the same birds that were sitting over, over in front of us. It's not because I'm still seeing those three juveniles sitting there. But these guys, this is a nest that I never saw. So these are two really small juvenile little greens, and that was the adult coming in to feed them. Now they're in horrible light up in there, and I can't really do anything with it, but uh, it's really cool to see. For my particular exposure here, um, it's a stop brighter than neutral gray. 
and my exposure is 1 2500th of a second at f6.3 and I'm shooting at 200 ISO. I'm going to use both the 500 millimeter lens for some of these birds in the distance and some of these nest shots, but I also want to use a 300 for, uh, for tight shots of the birds passing by. I'll try to get some nice flight stuff going on here. These guys are fast. Well, you can definitely tell you're near a rookery because there's no mistaking that smell. Pretty much the poop of a thousand birds. Look at this, guys. We got a juvenile green heron. They've come out right on the edge of the rookery and climbing up a little limb here. This is really neat. You always want to look for unique shapes and on of the tree limbs. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that adds composition to, to your, your photographs. It's not just a bird sitting on a limb. Well, an immature cattle egret has decided to jump up on the same exact limb in the same location. I thought I had a bad hair day. Fella, you need a baseball cap. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. There are three alligators bellowing, and they're, can you hear that? You got two smaller ones, and then this guy right in front of the boat is obviously larger, a lot larger, because he's so much louder and it's a lot deeper bellow. There's another one, so we have four. So they're kind of marking their territory and trying to attract females at this point. I'd really love for those gators to come out here in the open so I could get a shot of them bellowing. You know, that's a shot that I've always wanted to get and I've uh, never had the opportunity. I've seen it a couple of times and it is something really, really spectacular. When they blow their body up and start to exhale, every muscle in their body expands and contracts so rapidly, it actually creates ultrasonic waves that travel out through the water. And as it goes through the water, it makes the water spray up into the air, maybe three, four feet, and it's just all around them. And, and in the right light, it is really something spectacular to see. And, uh, but you know what? That'll keep me coming out here day after day. You never know when it's gonna happen. I can go all my whole life and never see it, but uh, there's always hope. Well, this has been pretty cool. A lot of activity. Birds are still active, but you know, it's light's getting real harsh now. It's getting late in the morning, 10 30, 11 o'clock mark here. Um, but one way to tell when the light is getting too harsh to photograph is when you're determining exposure for a white bird. If you find yourself trying to step down the exposure so far to get the exposure on the white proper, the green foliage around it's going to turn black. So at that point, you know, it's just way too contrasty to, to do any, any real nice imagery. So uh, let's get out of here and maybe head up in a little bit into the uh, deeper swamp where the light's a little more subdued and see if we can find something else. Maybe it's the songbirds or who knows what. Well, we got a rook over here, but Oh my gosh, we got uh, a nice scene here too. All right, I'm gonna have to tuck up in this grass. I always, like, if I've got grass beds, I always like to try to stick the boat in the grass, and that helps keep it stable, especially when we're trying to video. Uh, let's see what we got here. It is a great egret, and anahingas drying their wings. Well, the egret just flew off. The Anahingas still like it. You know, it's one of those things 
and you're going to run across it all the time. It's a beautiful scene and it would make a nice picture, but I just can't get close enough to it to, to do it any justice. Well, that rookery was really cool, but you know what? I don't want to spend all day on one location. Let's, let's keep looking. I mean, this is a scavenger hunt and there's so much to offer in wild places like this. Let's, let's keep going and see what else we can find. Slow and quiet, that's the name of the game here. I can't recommend enough using a trolling motor for this kind of thing, because you can really slip up on some wildlife in here. This is cool. Prothorite warbler, right here in the cypress. And he's feeding on mayflies and worms, and he's back and forth all over the place. This is really cool. What a gorgeous little bird. Beautiful yellow. And slate blue to gray back. Now these little guys, you find them in swampy areas. This is the type of habitat you always find them in. Um, I see a lot of these on this lake. He's trying to sing with a bug in his mouth. Didn't your mama tell you you're not supposed to talk with your mouth full? Very cool, very cool. Like I said, you never know what you're gonna see. I mean, he obviously doesn't care a thing in the world about us being here. Got another bug in his mouth. He's sitting right there, not seven feet off camera. And he obviously isn't worried about me at all. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Because he is constantly back and forth, back and forth. And he has flown within 12 inches of my head. What a beautiful little bird. Oh my gosh. Look beside me, right here, Dave, right by my shoulder. <laughs> you like me, buddy? Well, I like you too. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Well, this has been really special. And uh, I hate to leave a, a great situation, and I normally wouldn't, but I want to show you what else this wonderful lake has to offer. Thank you, girl. Enjoyed that. What a beautiful place. Okay, whether you decide to get out and explore these kind of places in a kayak or a motorboat or wading, whatever you want to do, you got to be careful of wasp nests. These guys right here love to build huge nests right above the water, and they are a force to be reckoned with. You, you do not want to upset this. Look at these guys right here. I mean, they are completely covering that nest. Big nest. We were kind of easing along beside this little island of trees and grass here, and we passed by this the first time, and I looked through the binoculars and noticed we've got an immature little green heron sitting right here. Um, he's sitting on a limb. It looks like maybe he got in the water and he's drying his wings or something, but he is very content sitting right there. Um, he is no more than 20 feet from us right now. Nice side light on him. Beautiful, beautiful situation. Most of the day I've been shooting with my white balance Kelvin set to 5400 Kelvin, which is, is pretty much daylight. Now that it's getting late in the afternoon, the light's getting really warm and, and getting carrying kind of an orange cast to it. So I've dialed my Kelvin down to 5100. 
to intentionally take a little bit of that warmth out because late in the afternoon, if you've got your Kelvin up too high and your white balance set too warm, um, the image will get really, really orange on you and you, that's not gonna make for a nice shot. This guy's been real cooperative and we're gonna ease out of here, let him go about his business. He gave us a great shot, so um, I'm happy, I'm psyched. Let's get out of here. Lake Marion, South Carolina. I tell you, I'll put it up beside some of the larger A-list photography hotspots in the United States. You just never know what you're gonna see here. Look at this, guys. I was pulling into one of these sloughs and a barred owl flew down right across the in front of the boat, right across the water. And he's sitting right up here in this tree in front of us. Let's see if he'll let us get some shots. This is a pretty cool situation because I don't normally see him too much in the, in the middle of the day like this. Let's see what we got. Come on, buddy, stay right there. Stay right there. Very nice. Very nice. Very cool. That was cool. I think I got a nice flight shot out of that. I don't know what's going on here because now I've got two more owls back here behind us and they're just kind of hooting and so we've got owls all around us and I just saw two fly by so I don't know if it's a breathing thing going on or, or what. I honestly don't know much about owls and their behavior but uh, I'm going to set my tail right here and see what happens because there's obviously a lot of activity back and forth across this little slough. I might get lucky and get some more good flight shots, but that was awesome. That was awesome. To the tree, coming to the tree. Wow, look at that. Wow, very cool, very cool. He's laying in this tree over here. The other one just landed right beside me. I don't know which way to look anymore. I got one in the tree behind me and two out here. Hey, what this is? Uh, this is quite a treat this afternoon. You know, if you choose to use autofocus to try to get birds in flight, be sure you keep that sensor on the head, and if you if you can do it as close to the eye as possible. That's what you always strive to do is to get the eye of the bird in sharp focus. So whenever possible, if you're using autofocus, try to keep that sensor on the head so you can get nice sharp shots of the, uh, of the head and the eye area. This is too cool. We have had an awesome day today and, um, and this, this really helps kind of top things off. The barred owl, and he's just sitting up there kind of hooting away and um, what a fortunate thing to run across. Wow, what a fantastic day it's been on the lake. And I've been privileged to have seen many different subjects, some of which I was actually able to photograph, others merely a fleeting glance. But I invite each and every one of you to get out and explore new areas near your own home. I think you'll be surprised at what's in your own backyard. More information about the show is available online. And remember, it's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. I'm Doug Gardner for WOW Photo Adventures. We're gonna head out this morning and uh, see what we can find. This is kind of a scavenger hunt. If the motor will crank.
one at 2,500. So my base exposure, <clears throat> so my exposure now is gonna be one 2,500. Okay. David, tell me what you're doing. You're picking greens for lunch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, let's get over in here. What a fantastic day. It's a fantastic day it's been on the lake here today. 